Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us see how to make use of at the rate of JSON type info, at the rate of JSON subtypes, and at the rate of JSON type name. These three annotations brings in polymorphic behavior with the use of annotations. I have a very good example to walk you through on this. Let's quickly take a look at that. So here is an example. Let us say we have a class automobile, which is going to be your request. And here's a sample JSON request that is given to us by a product owner. Okay, let's say this is the swagger that you got. So it has a nested object bus, car and bike. At any given point of time, the incoming request can contain only bus object or the car object or the bike object. No two can be sent in the same request, which means at any given point of time, there can be only one nested object. You cannot have multiple nested objects of bus, car and bike. It's kind of like a type. Okay. So how would you implement this? In a normal case, what you will be doing is straight away you will be going here. Like you will declare this private car, car, private bike, bike. So this is how everyone would be doing it. And you might be validating, you know, the request and you will try to find out if the request has, you know, just as bus or if it has car then throw an error if it has again bike throw an error something like that what if there is a better way to do it you can actually introduce the polymorphic behavior using json annotations right at the deserialization itself so let us take a look at how can we do it so for this example what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a vehicle class which is going to act as an abstraction for bike car and bus classes so i'm going to have an abstract class called vehicle and it is going to have a set of json annotations in it so let us take a look at this annotation so i'll go by bottom to top because it is very easy to understand that way so uh, bike car and uh, bus are subtypes of the vehicle class okay so uh, we have an annotation called at the rate of json types i mean at the rate of json subtypes inside this we have an uh, you know uh, we have this elements defined the type defines here so the type value is going to be car dot class and the name is going to be car the type is going to be bike dot class and the name is going to be bike okay these are going to be the subtypes of the vehicle class so let us take a look at the bike class now so we are seeing at the rate of json type name bike this is nothing but the type name that you defined here so this name has to match the json type name that you define on the bike class car class and the bus class again now let's go on the top so your json type info what is this type info so your object is now going to be just a vehicle object and your car elements are going to be residing inside the vehicle object your bike elements are going to reside inside the vehicle object your bus elements are going to reside inside the vehicle object and the only element that only element or the property that is going to differentiate them are going to be the type and type is nothing but a property that you are going to define here you can have a, a different name here like for example let's say you can have even a name here in this case i'm going to keep it as type and this type is a json property and the name is where you use to identify which subtype that particular vehicle object is going to belong to it might be a little confusing but when i show you an example right you will understand this a lot better so let us quickly start this uh, project and let us go to a postman and i'll show you how this actually works so before we move on so you could see here in my automobile class i have the vehicle class you know defined here not the bus bike or the car class defined here directly i'm using the vehicle class here because the vehicle class is going to determine which subtype it belongs to so let us quickly go to a postman so here's my postman and you could see here i'm going to have a name automobile and the nested object is going to be vehicle it is not going to be a bus or it is not going to be a car or it is not going to be a bike the nested object is going to be a vehicle and the vehicle abstraction class is going to have a type called bus if you're going to send the elements for car right you just have to change the type to car or else if you're going to send it a bike you, go, you just have to send change the type as bike 
And once you change the type of bike, all the elements that you defined inside the bike element, bike class is going to represent it inside the vehicle class. Let me show you the bike class. So the bike class has a bike name, bike type. The car class has a car name, car type. The bus class has a bus name, bus type. So in this case, let us say, I'm going to send a bus type here. Let me define the bus elements here. It's going to be bus name and bus type and let me click on send. So we have received the output. The output is very simple. Let me quickly show you the controller. It's just going to you know accept the input and then you know sending it back. So so the, the input that the request that we send has come back to us. And you could see here our request has been successfully accepted and returned back by the automobile class. So in this request right let us go and change it. Let's say I want to change it to car. I'm going to give the car elements here. The car is going to be, let's say, Honda. CRV. And click on send. You could see here, the automobile class has accepted the type car of the vehicle object. And let's say I want to send bike. The bike name. Going to be Yamaha. Let's say R15. R15. Let me click on send, and our automobile class has accepted the bike type also. So now, do you understand the usage of JSON type info, JSON subtype, and JSON type name? How handy it would be when you work on multiple nested objects of same type. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos.